episode of Progress, Potential, and Possibilities, discussions with fascinating people designing a better tomorrow for all of us. I'm your host, Ira Pastor. Welcome, everybody, again to another episode of our show, bringing you another really fascinating guest today uh, who is helping to create a better tomorrow for all of us. Uh, we have the honor today to be joined by Susan Bratton, uh, intimacy wellness expert, sexual biohacker, self-proclaimed orgasmonaut, who is a champion and advocate for all those who desire lifelong intimacy and passion. Uh, Susan is the co-founder and CEO of two companies, uh, Personal Life Media, which is a publisher of heart-connected lovemaking techniques and bedroom communication skills, uh, as well as the 20, uh, which is a manufacturer of organic and botanical supplements uh, designed to enhance sexual vitality. Uh, a best-selling author uh, and publisher, Susan has 34 books and programs, including titles like Sexual Soulmates, Relationship Magic, Revive Her Drive, Ravish Him, Steamy Sex Ed, The Passion Patch, Hormone Balancing, and Hot to Trot. Uh, and she is currently also a, a company spokesperson for both the anti-aging group uh, Gains Wave Protocol and the Dr. Joe Claplin brand of vacuum erection devices. And her book, Pump Guide, has helped over 30,000 men regain their sexual performance in midlife and beyond. Uh, Susan has been featured across the major media, New York Times, on CNBC, The Today Show, frequent guest ABC, CBS, The CW, Fox, and NBC. Uh, and we will put links in the bio uh, to The Susan Bratton Show at BetterLover.com, her personal link on Instagram. Lust for Life Supplements, Flow and Desire at the 20store.com. Uh, we're lucky to have her. Uh, Susan Bretton, thanks so much for taking the time with them on the show today. Ira, it's so good to be here. You have such lofty guests doing such amazing things in this world that um, I'm really glad to be part of that tribe because I think our sexuality is something that fuels our creativity and our lust for life and can be fantastic our whole lives long if we let it. And so many people hit a wall, hit a roadblock, and then they never take the time to solve simple problems that have simple solutions and they miss the rest of their life of intimacy. So it's good to have an opportunity to let people know how many solutions there are out there to, to what ails us in the bedroom. <laughs> Absolutely. And this is an extremely important topic. Um, and, you know, Susan, when, I, when I was first you know, reading through some of your materials, you know, your uh, expertise, uh, as you, you know, you talk about these different areas, uh, lie is what you talk at the, sort of the intersection of, uh, on one hand, passionate lovemaking techniques, on the other hand, uh, these important communication skills. And, you know, I, I'm sitting here, I'm, I'm, I'm 53 now, and I sort of look at the world now, and I think, we have a problem on both these fronts. We've really, you know, communication <laughs> in many ways is broken down. You know, a lot of people are just doing this stuff. We don't really talk anymore. And then, you know, I, as a, you know, growing up in the late 60s, early 70s, you know, not that I got, you know, every, I didn't learn everything from Hollywood, but, you know, back in the day, there was romance, there was seduction, and even in sort of the golden age of, of pornography, you know, there were storylines behind stuff. Um, I don't any of that anymore. Where did everything break down between sort of lovemaking and communication? What, what happened to us? I think what happened was pornography. It, it created all these, it, it surfaced all of these different genres and made sex more transactional. I think um, dating applications made dating, it facilitated a wider base of potential mates, but it transactionalized sex. Um, movies didn't keep up with the times by offering romantic ideas that we could use. They, they kept staying in the same hackneyed grooves. Things are, television's getting smarter now. There's a little bit wider range of possibility with TV series and things like that now. I think that's starting to correct. Um, and then I also think as a nation, we've become more faction oriented. You're the red or the blue. And so we've started to have sets of values that have become important to us. And we don't 
necessarily want to spend time with people who aren't a values match. We're beginning to understand that we have values matches. We have to do less to cope with people who don't agree with us because we just go to our tribe and our flock who does agree with us. I'm not saying that's good or bad, but I am saying that everything's been kind of put into these little factions, whether it's the type of pornography or the type of people you hang out with or what have you. And I actually don't think that it's worse than it was. I think that we have more opportunities to have incredible experiences. We're starting to understand the potential of the human body. For example, this summer, I wrote an email series called Come With Me. And each week I covered a different type of orgasm. There are 20 kinds of orgasms that both the male and female body, the XX and Y chromosome can experience. And women are aware that they can be multi-orgasmic, but men really are lagging. You know, I'd say that's more of the, often I rail against the patriarchal view of sex, but in that particular case, I think men are getting shortchanged. They are kind of like, well, I'm happy with what I got. Well, dude, there's so much more for you. Why mm -hmm. don't you explore it? And they're not quite there yet, where women are demanding that they have more orgasmic experiences because it gets talked about more. We st we're starting to understand our systems and our equipment. We're starting to understand, oh, we have as much erectile tissue as men. Oh, we need a clitoral erection. Oh, we have three erectile systems wrapping our vagina. Who knew? We didn't even know we, we, didn't even know we needed blood flow. We didn't know blood flow was what created lubrication. Um, so I think there's just a an awareness that there's more opportunity, not less opportunity for us. But what I've found that people want from me more than anything are good ideas for fun sex dates. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's like a lot of what I do as the trusted hot sex advisor to millions is give people permission that what they're wanting isn't wrong and inspire them with ideas that they can try. I'm actually on my way down to do my very first workshop in a long time since the pandemic. I haven't done any public speaking. None of us have. And I'm taking them through a personalized sex life plan. These are people who are high, high performance people, mm -hmm. captains of industry or what have you. I don't even know if that's even anything anybody wants to be anymore, captain of industry. Industry's taken a beating for its capitalistic orientation. But uh, you can't know what you want. You can't get what you want unless you know what it is. Mm -hmm. And people have no idea how to walk through a visualization of what could be possible for their sexual pleasure and satisfaction solo or with a partner. And so I'm actually leading them through an entire series of ideas of experiences that they can create so that they can categorize them A, B, and C. A, definitely going on my sexual bucket list. B, I'm flexible, I'd be open to it. C, yuck, not interested at all. And having them rank order their A's into their bucket list so they can intentionally go about creating these experiences that they'd like to have in their life. Instead of watching their life go by until they hit one of those roadblocks where they're like, I don't know, there's probably no fix for it. I guess my sex life is over. Your sex life is never over unless you let it be over. So I think there's more opportunity than ever, but people are taking it into their own hands, like citizen journalism and all yep. of the things that we're all doing. We're all, yep. we're all now experts in our, of ourselves. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, talking about, uh, this is your, your, uh, orgasm list which which yeah. i went to and you know i yeah you there there's uh, 20 on there i i pulled off you know two here the in terms of expanded uh, orgasm practice for women okay. male multiple uh I, th I thought those were two cool ones but if there are other cool ones you want to talk about talk about you know a couple of in in your 
development of uh, your expertise, uh, your passion for passion. Uh, talk about a couple of the ones that sort of stand out to you that you want to mention. I mean, you mentioned male multiple, and that's great to know. Um, and at the same time, talk a little bit, because you mentioned titans of industry before. Uh, you also have an 80-20 rule. Uh, now, I ran into this 80-20 rule when I used to be in marketing in the pharmaceutical industry about 30 years ago. Talk about the sexual 80-20 rule, if you would. Well, I really have a platform that is a three-legged stool. And you mentioned it. You, you've done a beautiful job with your homework, Ira. I really appreciate that. You mentioned that what I do is I teach passionate lovemaking techniques through my books and programs. I'm a publisher of passionate lovemaking te techniques, my own and others whose work is extraordinary. And then I have bedroom communication skills because bedroom communication skills are more important than techniques. You can learn sex positions and oral pleasuring and all these different expanded orgasm practices. But if you can't talk to each other, it ain't no good. So I do sexual communication. And then the third leg of that stool is sexual health, ageless sexuality, sexual biohacking, anti-aging and longevity for your hair, your skin, your vulva, your penis, the things that are part of our sexual apparatus. And in that, I have done a very deep dive into libido botanicals and into blood flow. Most people think when their libido goes down that it's their hormones. Oh, my testosterone must be low. Oh, I don't have any estrogen anymore. I've gone through menopause. I, I just don't have any desire for sex. When in actual fact, testosterone is the hormone of desire. And when women go through menopause, they actually have a higher testosterone to estrogen ratio post-menopause. So they should be hornier. Mm -hmm. But when they've had a lifetime of mediocre sex, they just don't want it anymore. It's not hormones. It's lack of good sex that often has come from not having enough good blood flow, arousal, engorgement, and turn on before they've had sex, before they've been penetrated. Mm -hmm. And so they just don't want to do it anymore because they've never really had good sex, good intercourse. And since most people are in heterosexual monogamous relationships, they're, they're a, a vulva and a penis owner are come together. And if they don't, and she doesn't come, she doesn't want to keep doing it. He, it all, it's always easy for him. They call that the orgasm gap. Dr. Lori Mintz coined it in a TED talk. It's the gap between or the delta between how easy it is for a man to have a climax from penetration and how much more difficult it is for his female partner. And most of that came from them not understanding that she has as much erectile tissue in her vulva as he does in his penis, but hers takes a lot longer to get blood flow in and get lubrication going and get turn on happening than his does. He's got the benefits of high testosterone, so he's horny, and the benefits of a fast acting hemodynamics of the penile yeah. erectile tissue, where she's much slower at getting all that tissue filled with blood so that she has the same erection so that she has more surface area sending enough pleasure signals to the brain to trigger orgasmic response. And so it's really when you look at sex from the perspective of blood flow, <laughs> it's so simple. And blood flow is almost everything with sexuality. And we, our bodies produce half the nitric oxide that they did in our 50s as they did in our 20s. So our blood flow starts to diminish. We get arterial plaque from, so we can't get the, we can't get the blood into the pelvic bowl like we used to. And so for many people, what I say is, take a nitric oxide booster, mm -hmm. even before you think about hormone replacement or doing anything like that, what you really need to do is top up your nitric oxide systems, eat more leafy green vegetables, eat more beets, eat the things that convert into nitric oxide in your system. Nitric oxide is the molecule that squeezes the blood vessels and sends the blood to the place you need it. So your brain, when you're thinking, your heart, your belly, when you're eating and your genitals, when you're making love. And if you can't get enough blood flow down there, you can't get lubrication as a woman, your semen volume diminishes as a man and you can't get erectile function, man or woman, we have the same amount of tissue. So when I started looking at blood flow supplements and libido botanicals, I realized that the 80-20 rule, which they call Pareto's principle works equally well in libido. And that is that there's 80% of the stuff that you're doing isn't really working. 
And how do I focus on teaching you and getting you the 20% that does? And the 20% is a combination of the nitric oxide supplementation. And if you're over 40, you can supplement with nitric oxide in two ways, through arginine, which is an amino acid, and mm -hmm. citrulline. And citrulline turns out to be a more effective pathway for the older person for generating pelvic blood flow than does arginine. Also, arginine is contraindicated with herpes. So a lot of, you know, most people have Epstein-Barr, HSV-1, sure. HSV-2, what have you. And so you don't really want to be worried about herpes flares. So citrulline nitric oxide supplement is what I created in my company, The 20, as my front line, like, okay, you need this. Because when, and you came from pharmaceutical industry, when people make arginine and citrulline and you buy those bulk bags on Amazon, what they're actually made from is a corn liquor from pesticide laden corn in China, they put in a big vat, they inoculate it with a particular bacteria that poops out arginine. And then they, they put another yeast in there that converts it to citrulline. And so you're really, you're getting all the downstream pesticide chemicals in your supplements. So I wanted to clean that stuff out because obviously glyphosate, et cetera, these are all endocrine disruptors yeah. that actually depress our sexuality. And so the microbiome and what's going on with your microbiome and what's going on with your blood flow are, they are the foundation of a good libido but you can also take libido botanicals to boost your libido, but there aren't a lot that are very good. Mm -hmm. And um, when I did my research, what I realized is that there's a combination of ancestral wisdom of our indigenous cultures who have wanted more turn on for all of eternity of humanity. We have all wanted more turn on way back to the very beginning. We, we like to feel turned on. We like sex. We want to feel sexy yep. <laughs> because that sexual vitality is the other side of the same point of our overall vitality. Um, when we're, when we have desire, we have a lust for life. And so people have looked to plant medicine to help them with this. And if you look at Ayurveda, they used fenugreek. If you look at the Mediterranean area, they used tribulus terrestris, this little puncture vine. If you look at the Southeast Asian culture, they used tongkat ali, the root of a plant. So uh, if you look at South America, they used maca. And if you look at, uh, um, you know, countries around the world, uh, equatorial, they used cacao. <laughs> so cocoa, right? Yep. Chocolate. Yep. So uh, those are really the big five. You know, it's just like hunting lions in Africa. You've got your big five. These are the big five for libido. So what I did was I put them into a supplement that was a daily vitamin mineral, because what I found is that when I would talk to people and I talk to people, thousands and thousands of them all the time, I would talk to them and I would say, okay, you want a libido botanical. Are you getting enough vitamin D? Are you taking a mineral supplement? Do you have any magnesium? Are you getting boron? I mean, even just boron as an example, when you've got testosterone, you've got bound testosterone and it's bound to the sex binding globulin. And the only way it can come unbound, the protein come unbound is if you have boron. And then it becomes free circulating testosterone your body can use to get turned on. And so if you're not even taking your daily vitamin and you're taking a crappy vitamin with folic acid, there you are with the MTHFR genetic SNP and you can't, you get sick from folic acid and you're a bad methylator. So now you've got neurotransmitter suppression and <laughs> you don't have any boron. And you, you, so take a good methylated B vitamin mineral complex. Mm -hmm. So you're getting at least the fundamentals for your biochemistry to produce your hormones and then add the libido botanicals on. And the interesting thing about libido botanicals is that you have to herb cycle them because okay. if you take them for a long time, the efficacy wears off. Sure. And so what I did was I created a 90 day vitamin mineral where it's like you're one a day with a little something more. You take the tribulus first or second or third, it doesn't matter what order you take them in, but you take the vitamin with the tribulus in it. Then you take the vitamin with the tongkatali in it. Then you take the vitamin with the fenugreek and then you start over. So you're feeding your body these plant systems from around the world that are stimulating primarily blood flow and hormone production. Mm -hmm 
that are there with the things that they need to operate their cycles in the biochemic system. Yep. So that's where I netted out on the 80-20 was you don't need to do a ton of things. You just need to do them smartly. The 20% that gets the results, not the 80% that doesn't. And that was the Pareto's principle that I named the company the 20 based on. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, you have a uh, you have an encyclopedic uh, understanding of biochemistry, but the, even more impressive is uh, uh, you know this. And we're just learning about this now, right? This whole chronobiology that you know you, there's a certain amount of time you take things, and then you know sometimes it's good to skip a day, sometimes it's good to skip whatever. Pharmaceutical industry hasn't learned this, but um, you, you clearly have <laughs> have done your work. Because that's, that's very impressive uh, that you're combining uh, sort of both pieces of the puzzle there. Um, so one of the, the, the other areas I, I've seen you write about, and, and we've talked about it on the show, not from this perspective, but uh, microbiome. Yes. So here we are, uh, you, me, everyone listening, we have a, a couple hundred trillion organisms aside from us living within us, gut, vaginal microbiome, pulmonary, oral. Um, you've written about the gut. Talk a little bit about what you found out and some of the things that you write about in terms of the gut microbiome as connected to sexual response. Yeah, well, the gut, of course, hormones begin and neurotransmitters begin by being made in your gut. It's a gut brain access. And uh, you have to, you have to have a good gut microbiome, a vaginal microbiome as well. Yeah. And for women who are struggling with urinary tract infections, yeast overgrowth, etc., that's, that's a lot of that is generated because of gut dysbiosis. So whether you're having trouble methylating to recycle your neurotransmitters because you're not getting vitamin B12 and folate absorption, or you're having sensation loss because you're having serotonin issues as you age because your gut microbiome is off and you're not getting the things that you need, <laughs> right? It, it all comes, so much of it comes down to microbiome. And interestingly enough too, when women are having sex with men and men are having sex with multiple women, they're penetrating these vaginal microbiomes and women have, there are four big cohorts of leading bacteria in different groups of women. So some women, you, you, have a, you have kind of like a lead vaginal bacteria that you share with a cohort of women. And there are these tests now that you can take where you can see what your lead vaginal microbiome bacterias are. Okay. A lot of times I tell women who have a lot of um, vaginal dysbiosis is to actually just insert, just take the, take the probiotics out of the capsules, put them in your hand, use some Kathy's healing lotion or some organic avocado oil or something like that. And, uh, you know, it's just an organic, very, very simple uh, fluid and create a paste and insert that into your vagina and then rinse your vagina with nascent iodine in a water solution, because that's not going to disrupt the good bacteria. It's going to kill the bad bacteria. Um, don't take antibiotics when you get a UTI. Take uh, coffee and baking soda to flush it out. Take, um, oh, what's the wonderful thing that is this sugar that doesn't spike your- Oh, the xylitol? Blood? No, um, I'll think of it. There's a there's a sugar that you that you can drink that um, I'll think of it that um, when you drink it and you urinate it, the E. coli, which is what most UTIs are, they're attached to the vaginal mucosal walls or the, or to the ureter or the walls of the urethra, and it will want that sugar, and it'll attach to the sugar, and then you'll urinate out the E. coli, so mm -hmm. you don't have to take. Uh, an antibiotic to get rid of a UTI infection and wreck your guts some more. So there's all kinds of interesting things like that, that I love to study. One of the things that I'm really interested in right now uh, that I'm pursuing is this notion that erectile dysfunction, let's work up back up the stream, if you will. Okay. Erectile dysfunction is most commonly created by something called venous leak. And venous leak is when the penis has three big spongy tubes in it mm -hmm. and the blood runs down those tubes and it fills up. 
And when it fills up, it locks in because the endothelium, the smooth muscle tissue mm -hmm. is sponge stretchy and it stretches and closes and traps the blood in the penis so it can stay hard for penetration. It also feels better when it's full of blood than when it's flaccid. You feel more sensation because there's more surface area sending more pleasure signals to your brain. Mm -hmm. Well, when the penis has trouble filling and holding, when it gets bendy, when it loses its firmness, this is primarily from arterial plaque that has set in and calcified and made that endothelium too stiff mm. to have that suppleness for the locking mechanism. So the blood runs back out. Mm -hmm. That's the most common ki kind of erectile dysfunction. And it comes from arterial plaque, from vascular plaque. But now they're saying that the calcification is actually like you can have lots of fat in your in your veins and this is another piece of that this is a tributary of that river of thought which is you know cholesterol has been vilified mm. but our brains are made of cholesterol yeah. and you've got all these keto people out here super healthy eating tons of healthy fats eating right. their avocados and their avocado oils and their coconut oils and their nuts and their seeds and they seem to be doing fine and they're not dying of heart disease and yet they're eating meat and you know all kinds of things and so i i go back to looking at it's not the cholesterol it's it's healthy fats that we need to operate but it's this calcification of the fat along the wall and the calcification comes from oral microbiome bacteria. So how do we do oral microbiome bacterial tests? I just did one at one of my dentists uh, and I'm learning how to read it and analyze it. And I'm looking at what bacteria they're looking at and why they're looking at them. Because how would you determine if you have the bacteria in your mouth and the inflammation from the, that bacteria that's leaking into your vascular system and calcifying your arteries and giving you erectile dysfunction and then heart disease and strokes, which are the things we die from besides cancer. So how do we nip that in the bud in the oral microbiome? That's what's interesting to me is, okay, let's dig deeper into this situation so we can stop the calcification so we can stop the erectile dysfunction. Today, we can go in with Gaines Wave, as you mentioned in your introduction to me. Mm -hmm, I am a mm -hmm. spokesperson for this company because they do an incredible job helping men regain erectile, dis erectile function by sending acoustic waves. You go into a Gaines Wave doctor. They're mostly urologists and longevity and anti-aging clinics and things mm -hmm, like that. Mm -hmm. You go in and they run this little wand on your penile tissue and it sends sound waves, acoustic waves in. They used to use it for breaking up kidney stones originally. Mm -hmm. And it breaks up that calcified plaque in the penile arteries. And then you get more blood carrying capacity back. It also does hormesis or micro damage mm -hmm. and it stimulates new tissue and nerve growth because a lot of guys, as they age, they have not premature ejaculation. They have sensitivity loss. Yep. They have delayed ejaculation. They can't quite achieve climax. It's, they can't, you know, oh my God, my wife is so mad at me. I've been going on and on and on <laughs> inside her and I just can't ever get there. And now she feels like I don't love her and I do. I just can't seem to achieve climax. And so what the Gaines wave can do is reverse the ED and return the sensitivity and the nerve growth back to the penis. Mm -hmm. And then you add the accelerant of the P shot, the PRP. Right. You know what that is? Platelet-rich plasma. Plasma. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah platelet-rich plasma. It comes from our own blood. They, they get, take a vial of blood while you're in there doing the treatment and they pull off the white blood cells and the red blood cells and they have the fibrin rich matrix of healing and growth factors mm -hmm. the cytokines etc that is our wound healing from our blood how we repair our body and they concentrate it 
and then they inject it and it really doesn't hurt. They've numbed your penis with lidocaine. They inject it into those corpus cavernosum spongiosum tissues and that calls to your body to come repair the damage they just did with the acoustic wave technology. And that accelerates the reparation and the remediation, what they call sexual rejuvenation of the tissue. And we have the same technology for women. They call it Femi wave mm. and the O shot or orgasm shot. And those two work hand in hand along with vacuum devices to draw the blood and to increase the blood carrying capacity. So you stack the nitric oxide supplement with the Gaines wave or Femi wave with the P shot or O shot. And when you go home, you're doing a little vacuum erection device pumping to pull the blood in to get that expansion back to you, you, now you're, you were, you're 60, but now you feel like you're 30 again, because you've reversed the atrophy of aging that we all suffer from. It's, uh, it's fascinating. And, and once again, hearing some of these, um, uh, these devices that are, are repurposed, I think the term we typically talk about, uh, uh, you know, used for one thing for 50 years and now, huh, you know, seems obvious enough, obvious enough, but you know, voila, you know, here's hey, something. What, what'll happen if I try it on my dick? Exactly. Isn't that how all good things have been invented? <laughs> exactly, exactly. That's biohacking 101, right? I mean, it's, uh, but, but, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting, Susan, because, you know, in, in you know, I, I spend some time in the regenerative medicine space and, you know, actually a lot of things in, in, in my industry where sort of there's the, uh, biologic component to something, and then sort of the uh, information science thing. We're talking, you know, whether it's uh, you know stem cells here, devices yeah. here. Uh, yeah. We see it in all all sorts of areas, and it's you know I'd love to you know go back once again to um, what we started off with in terms of your uh, your specialty, which is you know focused on communication, focused on techniques, and then obviously a lot of you know biologic tools. I'd love to get your your view on sort of the future now. Um, I say, what's the future of, of sex? But um, obviously we hear and we see about uh, virtual reality and extended reality and the metaverse, all sorts of this other stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm, I, maybe I'm an old soul, but I'm not too keen on that stuff. Uh, but maybe, maybe, you know, well, you know I, I'm just, you know, one viewpoint. Where, where do you think all that's going? Does that have a place in uh, the sex of the year 2050? Um, or is that just, we're, we're, we, we've gone too much in the wrong direction and we should be uh, coming back to sort of what we've been doing the last several thousand years, or at least other species have been doing for the last several million, <laughs> hundred millions of years uh, in terms of the, uh, uh, the more natural, organic uh, way to look at, uh, at sex. Ira, the genie's out of the bottle. Yeah. It ain't never going back, man. Embrace the friggin' metaverse. <laughs> um, there will be a lot of people, you know, as anxieties increase with people due to things like social media, um, as we deal with these pandemics and we become shut in so we don't yep. die, um, as couples, as singles and couples embrace sex tech or adult toys, sexual toys, pleasure toys, and learn to incorporate them into their sex play and realize, oh, well, I can have 20 kinds of orgasms, including ones with incredible sex toys. I mean, there are lots of categories of sex toys now, sure. and we're barely scratching the surface of Bluetooth programmable toys and haptics based toys and yep. d distance sex with haptics based toys. We can, I can turn on your prostate massager from um, here in Marin and you're in downtown Philly, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I can control it and drive you crazy, right? <laughs> so I think that's all going to be so incredible. Um, the kind of pleasure that can be created from devices is mm -hmm. really great. Um, the kinds of experiences that we can create and fabricate in, and co-create in the metaverse are mm -hmm. going to be so thrilling and interesting. I mean, the, 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 the things we're going to have sex with are going to be incredible, right? I can't wait to see what they're going to look like. So all of that, plus 
all the choice that we have with online dating apps and um, all of the ways that people can match for their kinks and desires. Oh, I love to be a daddy for little girls. Oh, I love daddy, daddy, little girl. Let's go on a date and see if we have any chemistry, you know, <laughs> acting out the fantasies of our particular kinks and desires. And, and one of the good things about our kinks and desires is that as we mature, our sexual maturation follows suit. What we want at 20 is different than 30, is different than 40, is different than 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. I have a couple of clients, you know, fans in their 90s, many in their 80s. And I want to go back to expanded orgasm because that you mentioned that earlier in male yep. multiple orgasm. And expanded orgasm is the type of practice you can do your, you can get better at your whole life. And so it's a very interesting practice. And I'd love to share that with your listeners. Um, so I think that we are realizing our orgasmic potential. You, you introduced me as an orgasmonaut. I like to say I go to the far reaches of orgasmic outer space and I come back with the map to the territory so that you can have these experiences yourself. We are going to get better and better at keeping our genitals ageless, at expanding our orgasmic potential, at leveraging tools and toys and objects and meta experiences with people that we've been able to match with based on the things that are interesting us to us in this moment of our sexual maturation. So on every dimension, everything is going to get better. Great message. Uh, Susan, what's coming up uh, in terms of 2022? Um, conferences you're gonna be at, uh, things that you, you can, uh, nothing confidential of course, but anything that we can give us the scoop one while we have you now. Um, please take the floor if I've, I've missed anything that you wanted to specifically uh, highlight. Well, speaking ops are just coming back, Ira, and I'm still very cautious about being out in public. Sure. I'm, I'm really still much of a shut-in. I've gotten long-haul COVID. I got it very early on. I'm still mm -hmm. recovering. I've done a lot of work to get myself back to health, and I'm not really quite there yet, so I'm super careful. I'm doing uh, Your Best Live, which is the uh, Tony Robbins Platinum Group people. I'm, I'm leading them through this personalized sex life plan so they can walk away with a sexual bucket list. Doing that in February and April, I'm speaking at the Paleo FX uh, conference okay. and um, they are people who are the types of biohackers that love to live life at the t upper limits of human potential and they like human sexual potential. So I'll be teaching them some, you know, highly uh, functional sexual techniques. They love that kind of thing. Um, but I'm just... I mean, I just think the whole meat space is still suspect in 2022 and 2023. Uh, I mean, until we can get the whole planet vaccinated yeah. uh, and we can deal with tamping down the transmission so the mutations get hobbled, so we're not constantly playing whack-a-mole, it's going to take us years. Yeah. I think we are really going into the... Well, my first pandemic partner that I had to have sex with, she's getting or he or she's getting on my nerves. I think I need a new pandemic sex partner. I think we're still in the like, okay, now I now I thought I was going to have a pandemic sex partner for a year, but it's been two and I need, I need to have sex with somebody new. Like, I think that's where we still are. <laughs> People are still staying indoors, but feeling lonely. Yeah. and trying to figure out how to have small, safe, vaccinated experiences. And even the vaccinations are, are, are an issue because of the, the, the variants. So it's, what are we doing? We're learning how to cook and feed ourselves and restaurant food doesn't taste good anymore. And we triple mask to go see Matrix on the big screen and do the best, <laughs> order everything delivered and yeah. do the best we can do in our small groups. That's that's kind of where we are for a while. And, yeah. and uh, I won't be out very much because there's not very much to be out in. And unfortunately, the political landscape has bifurcated our country so much that in, 
it's forcing us to only hang out with the people who are a values match around how we handle our risk management and safety with regard to being in a pandemic. So I think we're choosing our people based on our value systems once again. I'll hang out with scientists. Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, you know, this is an, I mean, if I, if I could say, you know, the type of work you do is definitely a, a bright shining light in, in the middle of, uh, uh, of everything that's going on. And it's exactly the type of uh, story, people that, that I like to have on the show, because it's all about, you know, as we say, a better tomorrow. And, you know, I'm going to keep following. We will put all your links uh, in the bio when we publish the show, um, but really rooting you on. Obviously, you've, you've done a tremendous amount of work over the years putting uh, your systems together. It's very impressive. Um, for, uh, for everybody that's going to be listening to this particular show uh, on our podcast networks or watching on the YouTube channel, You've been spending time uh, with Orgasm and Not, Susan Bratton, intimacy <laughs> wellness expert, sexual biohacker, doing amazing things and champion and advocate for lifelong intimacy and passion. That's something that, uh, that we all really need. Um, Susan, I, I want to take time again to thank you for taking your time to come on the show. Obviously, thank you for everything you've been doing. And as we say again on this show, thanks for creating a better tomorrow through what you're doing. Very impressive story. Thank you, Ira. <laughs>